So l- let me ask you this. We we won some of these games early in the season, some of the cupcake games, the Sanford game. But Peyton just doesn't – he wasn't quite – looked like he was figuring things out. Yeah. What do you need to see? Because you, you, there's a scenario where you can blow some of these teams out and Peyton still doesn't look quite right. Yeah. The, what do you see from, from at the QB position so that we aren't even in danger of having to talk about inserting a new QB into the meat of the SEC schedule? Well, the, the buzzword yeah. is alignment, right? The buzzword is alignment. Uh, Payne Thorne talked about this some. Again, I can't repeat everything he told me, but it it did make me feel confident that this will look differently come the fall. So if 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 what he was saying is true, there were some things going on there. And and, and I want to be stressed, this wasn't him shirking responsibility, but they were systemic things that were definitely holding this offense back. And so as, you know, on look, interested onlookers, we just see the end result. And you're like, yo, how could this be this bad? This guy started three years at the Power Five level and regressed. And so I think that Peyton Thorne with a better, with more alignment from the offensive staff and more input from Hugh Freeze all season long would have been a 23 to 2,500 yard quarterback last year which is a little bit of regression from Michigan State, but it's not 1,200 yards worth like what we saw. <laughs> yeah. I, I I have maintained that there's no way this dude regressed over 1,000 yards from Michigan State to Auburn. That is systemic, and that's on the coach. <laughs> so, you know, if they fixed it, you should easily see a better Peyton Thorne. <laughs> easily. Yeah. But that's, I think it highlights how bad things were offensively, you know, justified by the fact that they fired the offensive coordinator after the season. <laughs> I don't even, how long after the bowl game did this firing come? It wasn't, it was like Bro. a quick, it was pretty quick. <laughs> I think it, it, it felt yeah, like it happened half time at the bowl game. I ain't going to hold you. Yeah, like, yeah, the, they had once the they decided elbow. to go to the yeah. backup QB, I think he was done, bro. It was yeah, like, yeah, we're, was, we're, finished. we're finished. This, this isn't working. Yeah, because if you're Hugh Freeze, you're thinking, it's got, Damn it, I got to do everything. <laughs> right? And that's pretty much what he said in the post game. <laughs> Fam, that's like so accurate, I though. Couldn't, like, I he's couldn't like, even, man, I, I couldn't even recruit. I can't even recruit. <laughs> Y'all call a decent game. So I. No, he's just like, you know what? I'm going to go recruit. I don't know what y'all doing over here. I'm just going to go recruit and make sure 2024, uh, this 2024 class looks great. Yeah, so, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've cursed a lot on this. We definitely getting demonetized. Nah, probably get more <laughs> I'll, I'll go put some bleeps in later. But, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, that's where I'm at about it. I, I just think if they fix the systemic issues, this off Payton Thorne improves from 1,700 yards where he finished last year to 22 to 2,500 yards easily. That would have netted Auburn at least two more wins last year. Right. At least, right? Think about it. Now, 2,500-yard Payton Thorne, you you beat Saban in his last year coaching, which would have been so epic to send him out with a loss in the Iron Bowl. Yeah. You don't lose to New Mexico State, so you're at eight wins already, right? And you maybe pull out a miracle versus Georgia. This is why I get so frustrated when we beat. Yes, Harson had a different approach to recruiting, but the talent was not as bad as the record. <laughs> it just wasn't. Not defensively, it wasn't. And and they should have improved the roster. Hooks and, and, and Martin, all those guys. I don't think those guys were as bad as it looked last year. I think the system dumped everybody down. So, you know, some players say, hey, I can't endure another year of this. I'm out of here. <laughs> I can't stay another year hoping you might fix it. <laughs> because there's something that they want to do offensively. And they believe that they don't have the roster to do it right now. Right. So what you're going to see in year two is some version of it that they think they can execute. And they're going to hope that it can win games. So when I set the ceiling at seven wins, that's... <laughs> reflected in how huge a leap I think they have to make systemically. <laughs> it's not to say they can't do it, and I'm happy to be proven wrong, but look, man, uh, Vegas set the over-under at seven and a half. If the, if the over-under is at seven and a half, right, realistically, they think the ceiling is eight games. 
that's just me, right? Like, I, I don't know. I, I think the fans get delusioned, guys, sometimes when they when we start talking about, oh, well, Auburn could could win 10 games. What, Do what? they have the talent? Fans are delusional? And where? When where? When, when does that happen? Fans? Nah, Delusion? Uh, Never. Well, yeah, we got a Bama fan running wild in the chat here. So hey, he's delusion running, is a monk. He's he's running in circles. He's not even running wild. He's saying the yeah, same yeah, three yeah. things over and over again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. delusion <laughs> is among us. Welcome, welcome, Skip. But uh, I just think if you look at what they can do, you've got to scheme this thing up better. I think that's the. I mean, the scheme when all the talent is equal, it's who has the better game plan. <laughs> That's it. That's what it comes down to. So a good scheme can make an average team look good, a good team great, and a great team epic. <laughs> but conversely, a bad scheme can make an epic team look great, a great team look good, and a good team look average. <laughs> an average team look terrible. <laughs> we, can, we can't. I know people jump all over me when I say this system, 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 system. But that's what you hire a coach for. <laughs> Recruit yeah. and system. <laughs> And I mean, and again, for Coach Hugh Freeze, he couldn't run his system the way he wanted to. And it, so it looked disjointed because he didn't feel like he had the pieces to run the type of system that he wanted to. My only thought, only issue is you had a system that could have worked last year had you decided to just go to it. And you yeah. just were like, nah, we're just going to kind of piecemeal this thing together with others. And I, I just I, that frustrated me watching it because I'm just like, I yeah. listen, man, we, we can play better than this. That that well, I, and, that and, and, and that, came down. Go ahead, to, Mike. That iron bolt came down to decisions by on the sideline. <laughs> I don't care what anybody said. You you were you were outmanned from a a a talent standpoint. Even though I don't believe talent yet was as big, but those guys had enough physicality. They had enough heart to take Alabama, a team that you know, on paper should be eons ahead of them in terms of you know rating, and they needed a miracle throw. <laughs> At the end. But he caught that ball because of what? A decision to rush two people. (laughs) Come on, man. If anything, yeah, you run him out of the pocket, and and, and he's not going to run 30 yards into the end zone on you. I I, I would have much rather see him try to run uh, 31 yards uh, than that, yeah. Then throw the ball yeah, yesterday. That's, for the all, that's, that's all I'm saying, man. So you, you had enough NFL. talent to do that. You did. And yeah. and Bama fans cannot like it, but you had enough talent to do that. That's why I, I I stand up for the guys when we when they beat when people beat down on the talent. I, I, were they the most talented team? No. <laughs> but could they have gotten more out of this roster? One hundred percent. Easily. Not e- it's not even a question as to whether or not yeah, they could have gotten more. They could have got more out of that yeah. roster. They could have got two more wins out of that roster last year, been an eight win team, and 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 we'd be sitting here with a very different feeling going into year two. That's what I that's why I expected out of Hugh Freeze. I was like, his his scheme and system should be good for at least two wins, right? <laughs> yeah. This is a coach that beat Saban twice. Twice. <laughs> Saban wanted to hire him. Yeah, Saban wanted to hire him. So he's got he's got some. Now I'm I'm not gonna lie. This is a different SEC than the one he. Sure. He beat Saban in eight years ago. It feels weird to say that, but like 2015, sure. 2014, I think it was right. Like, it were the back to back years. Yeah, something like that. Sure, but but again, you you just want to see you want you want to see if he can do even what a Kiffin. A, the SEC is different now for Kiffin than it was when he was the Alabama OC. Yeah, I'm, right. Again. But the but the offense, the offense, he's been able to adapt and do things. Hugh Freeze has to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, to me, the evolution of of himself as a coach, I thought was Saban's greatest superpower. Right. Yeah. He he completely changed the philosophy of that Alabama team from that first championship to like the fourth. I, I, I thought it was impressive. And instead of sticking with the my way or the highway type deal, he was like, you know what? Three yards in a cloud of dust football isn't really going to get it. So he went out and he got Lane Kiffin. He got somebody who was dynamic with quarterbacks. And, and what was the guy's name? Uh, Blake, Blake, Sims. Blake Sims, Jacob Coker. He won championships with those guys. And no disrespect to them, but they weren't. Yeah. Hurts and Tua yeah. and, <laughs> and yeah, it's Young, it's not right? disrespectful and, to say, hey, those guys are not like Hall of Fame quarterbacks, right? Like they're yeah. 
they're 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 good. They're they're D one caliber quarterbacks, but they're nothing amazing. Right. Okay. So to my point, scheme got them the rest Correct. of the way. One hundred percent. Right. Scheme got them yeah. the rest of the yeah. way to those championships, and and I and and there's a guy who gets paid millions of dollars to do that part. Right. Millions of dollars a year. Come on, man. Uh, let's get to some of the rest. Damian Smith, he's getting Dang. us close. He gave us 20 Warport memberships. Thanks to you, good sir. We're 20 away. Skip 07 away UA. You might as well just go ahead and sign up, bro. You're part of the family. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> just just know, sign right? up. You, Make sure you uh, really... share, the, share the live stream too, Skip, since you... Yeah, yeah. Talking. Get your fellow Bama friends yeah, get, get the rest of, of the... um. <laughs> The, the, the I don't know where y'all congregate at Trailer Park something yeah, go get them <laughs> is, is it enough Wi-Fi for all of y'all to share all right my bad <laughs> Greg Wheely <laughs> says sure, we're gonna I'm make UGA it. regret that homecoming decision I just feel it mm, hopefully uh, we'll we'll Greg know Wheely says I just raised my UGA hate to Bama level well Skip is making sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, no, you're not going to hate them more than us. <laughs> I know. Tim Tumain Taylor says that was so disrespectful. Big boy voice. Are you referring to the uh, ATL movie? Because I think that's... that's Yeah, yeah. So disrespectful. I, I like... So, <laughs> so disrespectful. disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love that part. He was amazing in that movie, even though he was being himself to a degree. Dustin Pace says bold for a team that needed Brock Bowers to win them the game last Brock year. Brock went Brady stupid Jordan. dummy hard in that yeah. game. Like, oh my goodness. Like he, he was man, he was doing though. things. Yeah, I don't like he was I think there was some argument. I I mean, I don't know. I thought I think you could you could have made an argument for him to the best player in college football last year. Yeah. I think an all an argument could have been made for him as the best player. If he hadn't football. gotten hurt, that argument would have been a lot stronger. I think the injury yeah. is what moved him down out of that conversation. But yeah, Brock Bowers doesn't get hurt. There's no reason why he's not legitimately in a Heisman conversation um that season. Because he was going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Miller Howe says the fact that Auburn has so many guys from Georgia on the roster, they come in for respect. Listen, the, one of the anchors of every successful Auburn team has been a strong base of guys recruited out of high school from the state of Georgia. You have to go next door. They're ripe with talent. And what Alabama has been doing is they've been taking their pick along with Georgia out of that state. Hugh Freeze is changing that narrative a little bit, not only in the state of Alabama, but also they're going, they're, they're putting an emphasis on the state of Georgia. I know for a fact that Atlanta area, they're trying to get in there, man, and find those kids. There's a, there is so much talent in that area. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and if you can go next door, if you can go an hour and a half away and recruit, your job gets a lot easier. I think it's, this is the advantage that a lot of the Southeast schools have had on Northwest schools for a long time. They've got to go way out of their footprint to find talent yeah you know I mean, you got schools like ohio state coming to the same area Their areas yeah to recruit just to you know yeah, recruit, it's, it's yeah. why the texas texas has been good for so long all the guys are in their backyard yeah. so if you want to stay home which a lot of these kids do it was overrated for me that's why i moved out to college but like uh, 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 a lot of these guys want to stay home and they want to play someplace where their parents can come watch them play Every right. single week, I'm having multiple conversations with either coaches or athletes about recruiting, and it continues to pop up with athletes. They want their folks. Talia Scott signed with Auburn. You know, one of, the she, one of the things she said was, Auburn is a place where my people can come watch me play basketball. And that's why you got you, you to gotta like where Auburn stands with a juju. Yeah. Right? Because that, that factor right there. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's let's get to where Steve Bradley says I saw where we are already twenty four point dog to Georgia. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. I, I, I so I I'm I'm know. less disrespected by the Vegas line because I understand that comes from the fact that Auburn hasn't shown it on the field yet. Right. Yeah. Right. Retro the Georgia fan says I don't think it's disrespect in my opinion. It's a week six game, but also Georgia's second home game of the season coming that late. Like I said, I, I I can reason my way to it by looking at their schedule. All right, this they've had this road road stint. Right, because Clemson's Clemson's neutral is a neutral site, site yeah. right? They've had this road stint. This is going to be our opportunity to have a home game. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm still disrespected. I don't care. <laughs> just just like I understood why Jaden Ott said what he said last year. It's disrespectful. I don't care. It's still still disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. Damian Smith says, "Hey Ike, we need that Jordans." Hashtag I took that personally t-shirts 
for Georgia's homecoming. Okay. And I took that personally. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. I like it. I like it. For full episodes, make sure you head over to the War Report's YouTube channel and check out the weekend tailgate. Every Sunday, we're going live. Join us on the live stream at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, War Eagle.